Welcome back to Monitors Unbox. Today is a bit of a different video because instead of reviewing monitors and talking about what I'd recommend to a general audience, I'm going to talk about which 4K OLED monitor I would personally buy. At this stage, I've tested six of them, and I honestly think it's quite difficult to decide between the various options. So this video is going to break things down further and hopefully help some of you decide. So the six monitors I've tested up until this point are the ASUS ROG Swift PG32 UCDM, the MSI MPG 321URX, the Dell Alienware AW3225QF, the LG 32GS95UE, the Gigabyte Aorus FO32U2P, and the ASUS ROG Swift PG32 UCDP. Yeah, that's a lot of monitors with very similar specifications, all using one of the latest 32-inch 4K QD OLED or W OLED panels. Here's how I would go about deciding which monitor to buy. The most important consideration is the price, and this is something that I tend to heavily focus on in reviews. Some features just aren't worth paying huge premiums for, and it might also make sense to preference less desirable configurations if there's a substantial price difference. So let's make a table with the six monitor options and their respective prices in USD and local Australian dollars. There's actually a bit of a discrepancy here between the regions, and I suspect you'll find this is the case in your region as well. For example, in the United States, the MSI 321URX is the cheapest model at $950 US, followed by the Alienware AW3225QF. Four of the six options are priced at $1,300, including the PG32 UCDM. But in Australia, the UCDM is by far the most expensive model at $2,750, and the other ASUS model, the UCDP, is also priced above the others, making ASUS an especially premium brand for us Aussies. The cheapest model locally is the AW3225QF, which is quite a bit cheaper than the others, followed by the MSI LG and Gigabyte monitors, all around $2,200 dues. So what I want to consider is what monitor would be best if I was purely purchasing it for gaming. I personally recommend these 4K OLEDs primarily for gaming and content consumption, and if I was going to buy one for personal use, it'd be for gaming. There's a couple of key features across some of these monitors that I'm personally not a huge fan of, so let's talk about those first. I would prefer to use a monitor that's flat over one that's curved in a 32 inch 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I just don't think the 1700R curve of the AW3225QF adds all that much to the package, and with all OLED variants providing excellent viewing angles, there's no real need for a curve to hide viewing angle flaws, like is often the case with VA LCDs. This makes it difficult for me to want to purchase the Alienware variant. However, going for a flat model instead might be a costly choice, especially in Australia. In the United States, it's not a huge deal. The flat MSI model is a little cheaper than the Alienware, but in Australia, the AW3225QF is easily and consistently the cheapest. The cheapest flat version is the MSI 321URX, and that's $250 more expensive, a 13% premium for otherwise quite a similar product. But when I'm spending around the $2,000 Aussie mark, and I'd want to keep this monitor for at least five years, I'd really like something that suits my preferences, and a 13% premium to go flat isn't outrageous, though it's not ideal. If we were talking about a more budget monitor category, I'd certainly swing more towards the cheaper display, especially if there was a $250 difference, but at the high end, I think I could justify it. So unfortunately for Dell, based on my preferences, I can rule out the AW3225QF early. The other main consideration is glossy versus matte. All of the QD OLED monitors that I've tested so far are glossy models, the exception being the Samsung variant that I'm yet to test, and all of the 4K W OLED variants are matte. If I was using one of these monitors more for productivity stuff, I'd probably have a different preference, but for gaming, I honestly don't mind too much whether the display is matte or glossy. If I end up with the matte monitor, not a huge deal. If it was glossy, that's also fine. Based on extensively using OLEDs over the last few years, I've tested 33 of them, I think for my gaming use case I'd have a slight preference for glossy. I have an optimized gaming setup where environment lights and windows don't interfere with the screen too much, so there aren't a lot of annoying reflections caused by the glossy panel. This removes one of the main downsides to glossy, and in return I get all of the benefits, like the lack of coding related grain and the increase in clarity that brings. The only thing that gives me brief pause is how QD OLED Glossy handles ambient light, which is to say, badly, racing blacks in brighter rooms without optimized lighting. 
Of the options I've tested, a matte W OLED would actually be better if I wanted to game in both darker and brighter conditions. Like for example, if I wanted to play during the day with natural light as well as at night with the lights off. Going for QD OLED is a bit more restrictive on that front. It requires more light optimizations and is less suitable for that daytime play due to its poor panel composition. It's not something that changes my preferences significantly because I don't game during the day very much, but it is kind of annoying that going for a QD OLED restricts you a bit if you want the best viewing experience. I don't have strong enough of a preference for Glossy to automatically discount the W OLED models, so are the two W OLED variants worth considering? While the main benefit to those monitors is dual mode, the ability to run in both a 4K 240Hz and 1080p 480Hz configuration. This is great for competitive multiplayer gamers that want the best motion clarity, or for those that want to play a mixture of games and would switch between the two modes. But for me, most of my gaming is single player and I just wouldn't use the 1080p 480Hz mode. It's not because it's a bad or useless mode or anything, it's just not a feature I desire and I'm confident that I would pretty much never use it. Not finding dual mode especially useful for my gaming needs hurts the attractiveness of the LG 32GS 95UE and the ASUS PG32 UCDP. Especially in the United States, this almost puts these displays completely out of contention. Both models are priced at $1,300 US, which is $300 to $350 US of a premium over the cheapest QD OLEDs I've tested. That's an enormous 30 plus percent premium, and given I don't really want the main benefit of those panels, I just rule them out entirely. In Australia though, the 32GS 95UE is 2200 Aussie, which is a similar price to some of the QD OLED models, but the ASUS model being priced at $2400 isn't ideal, that's a 12% premium over the cheapest QD OLEDs. Before I completely rule out the W OLEDs, are there any benefits to these panels that I would want? Well, with the LG 32GS 95UE, not really. The LG model is less well calibrated than the MSI or ASUS variants, and its HDR brightness is underwhelming for a W OLED monitor. The ASUS W OLED variant, the PG32 UCDP, is the better version, and when both have the same price in the US, that rules out the LG variant entirely in my opinion. In Australia, with no real advantage for my use case over the 321 URX and a slightly higher price point, I think it's safe to rule it out in all situations. The PG32 UCDP is also pretty hard to justify under US pricing with that hefty 30% plus premium over the QD OLEDs, but in Australia that premium is more like 12%, which does keep it in contention. Relative to the MSI 321 URX, it has similar factory tuning, including a great sRGB mode with unlocked settings, and its HDR accuracy is also reasonable, though not clearly superior. The main advantage is its HDR brightness. It generally gets a little brighter than the 321 URX, and it doesn't suffer from panel dimming in higher APL scenes when used in its max brightness configuration. Unfortunately, panel dimming is replaced with a bit of a wonky EOTF curve that can boost brightness above where it should be, so there are trade-offs whether you go QD OLED or W OLED. I think if the PG32 UCDP was clearly the more accurate monitor and also provided slightly better HDR brightness, the 12% premium over the 321 URX could be justified. But for my use case, there's no clear benefit that I'm getting for the extra cost. Again, not going to be true for people that want to use the 1080p 480Hz mode, that would be worth the premium, but for me, I think I'll rule out the UCDP. Even something like text clarity is pretty similar between W OLED and QD OLED, which is a good thing for buyers, but again, doesn't create a ton of separation between the models. So at this point, I've ruled out the Alienware due to its curve and the two W OLED models because they don't provide enough extra features or performance for my use case to justify the price difference. This leaves me with the MSI Gigabyte and ASUS QD OLED models. I still believe that the ASUS PG32 UCDM is the best of the 32-inch 4K QD OLED models. It has the best feature set, including Dolby Vision support through a recent firmware update and a fully unlocked sRGB mode, though stuff like USB-C and a KVM switch are seen across all three models. Its factory calibration is generally fantastic as well, and includes a variety of HDR modes, though like with all QD OLEDs, there's no universally good mode. You generally have to decide between panel dimming in bright scenes or over brightening in dark scenes, which is disappointing. 
The two feature advantages the PG32 UCDM has aren't things that I would personally use. Dolby Vision is great for those that want to watch a lot of TV and movie content on their monitor, but I almost exclusively use my gaming monitor for gaming and leave the movies and things like that for my TV. Dolby Vision is not very useful for Windows-based gaming at the moment, and if anything, it's a hindrance given how Windows works, meaning the PG32 UCDM is best configured with Dolby Vision disabled for PC gaming. There's also brightness issues in the Dolby Vision mode. Secondly, while the unlocked sRGB mode is awesome, the locked sRGB modes on the MSI and Gigabyte models have excellent calibration and don't really need setting adjustments. So while having an unlocked mode on the ASUS model is nice, it's not a must-have. The UCDM also supports black frame insertion, another feature that I wouldn't use. The UCDM is the most expensive 32-inch 4K OLED in Australia at $2,750, a $600 or 28% premium over the MSI 321 URX. In the US, it's also about 30% more expensive, which makes it difficult to justify unless you specifically wanted some of its exclusive features. I don't think those features are essential for me, so with its high price tag, I can safely rule it out. This leaves the MSI 321 URX and the Gigabyte FO32 U2P. The main advantage that the Gigabyte model has is DisplayPort 2.1, UHBR20, which allows for the full 4K 240Hz experience without DSC on supported DisplayPort 2.1 graphics cards. This is more of a future looking feature given no consumer level GPUs right now can use that functionality. I also don't think it's an essential feature inclusion given that DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC looks and performs the same on the other models. My video on DisplayPort 2.1 goes into much more detail on the reasons behind this. In the US, Gigabyte are charging a hefty premium for DP2.1, with their model priced at $1300 compared to the 321 URX at $950, and there just aren't enough significant feature or performance differences to justify that premium. It's a really well calibrated monitor with an excellent sRGB mode, it's got a great range of HDR modes, but it just simply isn't 37% better. In Australia, there's only a $50 difference between the models, and this is where things get very complicated. Across the vast majority of areas, the MSI and Gigabyte models deliver basically the same gaming experience. Same motion clarity, same refresh rate, same OLED benefits, same risk of burn-in with the same burn-in warranty, and factory calibration is very good with both models. In fact, at many retailers, both models are the exact same price, with the 321 URX available for $50 less at just a couple of stores. So when faced with this proposition, which would I choose? I'm basically nitpicking at this point, but the Gigabyte model is slightly better tuned from the factory, includes an additional overbright HDR configuration, which is better in some games that would otherwise suffer from panel dimming, and you get the future-proofing benefit of DisplayPort 2.1. So with equal pricing in Australia, I would personally choose the Gigabyte FO32 U2P, and even a small $50 difference, just a 2% premium, would get me to pick the Gigabyte. In the US, it swings the other way, and I'd pick the MSI model with its much lower price point. I think this goes to show the quality of each model. There just isn't a lot separating these monitors, so pricing and features can play a huge role. Across the QD OLED models, I think it's difficult for any one variant to command more than a 10 to 15% premium, and that's especially true for the MSI model, which has the weakest feature set, probably why it's usually the cheapest. The W OLED models also suffer from being a bit expensive and aren't a great proposition if you're not all that interested in the dual mode functionality and actually using the 1080p 480Hz configuration. It's a unique feature for sure and useful for some gamers, but if you're mostly planning on 4K HDR gaming, it's not a must have. So that's how things stand based on my monitor preferences. I actually think there's something for everyone across most of these models, so the best choice for you might not be the same as for me. If you're less annoyed about a curved screen, the Alienware model is a great choice. There's dual mode W OLEDs for competitive gamers, Dolby Vision products if you like to watch a lot of movies and TV on your monitor, and a range of different price points. It's probably the most competitive set of high-end monitors that I've ever seen. Also, availability is settling a bit across all of these variants, so they are easier to find now than they were earlier in the year, although the MSI model is still in the most demand. 
It's also worth keeping your eye on some of the sub-variants to these models. For example, there's the Gigabyte FO32U2 that drops DisplayPort 2.1 and knocks $200 US off the price, or the MSI MAG 321 UPX that drops USB ports and costs about $50 less. I haven't tested these variants to know for sure whether there are any other differences, especially around performance, but my expectation is they are very similar to the main full-spec models. So anyway, that's it for this one. Just a breakdown of what I would choose and the things that I preference when looking across these 4K QD OLED and W OLED monitors. As I said, we've tested six of these models at the moment, and every time I get to reviewing one and it comes to the conclusion, I think, geez, it is really quite difficult to decide between these monitors. So I thought an extra video is probably worth making just to maybe help some of you out into making a decision and breaking down some of the features and things like that. So yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you want to support Monitors Unbox and the testing that we do, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Links to those are in the description below. We've also just recently enabled channel membership. So if you want to sign up right here on YouTube, we've also got that via the join button below. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.